bring people ever closer. Ibrahim Jata, GRTS. You can monitor GRTS Radio live on our website, and that's on www.grts.gm. Time now to take our first break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the international news. Stay tuned in. <laughs> This year, Afisal is offering you the chance to travel to Mecca to perform the fifth pillar of Islam, Al-Hajj. Twelve free Hajj packages to Mecca are there for you to win, including travel allowance and accommodation. To participate in the weekly Friday draw on GRTS TV and get the chance to win, simply type your Afisal number and send it by SMS to 1010 or call 1010 from your Afisal line. And for every SMS or call you make to 1010, you will get two Afisal minutes for free. But that's not all. This Hajj season, you can give the chance to any other Afisal subscriber to win a free Hajj package to Mecca. Type the official number of the person you want to be part of the Hajj draw and send it by SMS to 1010. May all your prayers be answered. <laughs> Sheikh Mahmoud has been elected president in Somalia, defeating incumbent president Sheikh Sharif Ahmed. The first poll of its kind in decades the belt, uh, signifies the country's quest to end more than 20 years of violence. As we hear in the CFI report, many say the landmark event could not have been achieved without the help of African Union troops. Somalia's lawmakers voted overwhelmingly on Monday for Hassan Sheikh Mohammed to be the country's next president. Mohammed, seen as a moderate, unexpectedly defeated incumbent president Sheikh Sharif Ahmed. He won 190 votes against 79 for the outgoing president, who had been seen as the favorite. This was the first poll of its kind in decades and a significant one in the country's quest to end more than 20 years of violence. Mohammed was sworn in as president within minutes of his victory. I congratulate all the Somali people wherever they are, and I can say that we have now come back from the long days of suffering, and we were on the right path. Hassan Sheikh Mohammed is a newcomer to politics, but many feel his election may usher in a new era for the war-torn nation. We welcome our new president. He's a well-educated man, and I hope that he will bring change to Somalia. What I expect from the new president is for him to create a new vision of peace and prosperity of this country. And we also hope that he will create new opportunities for young people. This historic poll would not have been possible without the support of the African Union and without the help of Kenya and Ethiopia in chasing out the Al-Shabaab Islamists. Many Somali refugees and displaced people believe the situation is now stable enough to return home and begin reconstructing the country. The teenage Pakistani girl accused of burning pages of the Quran has been released on bail and is now back with her family. 14-year-old Rim Shah Mashi spoke to CNN Zara Saya about the blasphemy case that has attracted global attention. Of roughly three weeks, 14-year-old Rimsha Massey was arrested, accused of blasphemy, locked up in an adult jail, covered up and moved around by gangs of armed police officers, and finally whisked away to an awaiting helicopter and reunited with her family after a judge granted her bail. It's little surprise Rimsha says she's relieved to be surrounded by familiar faces again. That's Rimsha's voice saying she's happy, talking publicly for the first time since her arrest. She spoke to us by phone from a place she and her family are using to hide out after an ordeal that still has her terrified. Yes, I'm scared. I'm scared someone might kill me. I'm scared of anyone who might kill us. That fear came last month here at Rimsha's neighborhood when she was suddenly accused of burning pages of the Quran, a violation of Pakistan's blasphemy law punishable by life in prison. Rimsha is Christian. Her lawyers say she was set up by a neighbor she didn't get along with and a local Muslim cleric who wanted to scare away Christian families from the neighborhood. No, no, Rimsha said when we asked her if she burned pages of the Quran. 
Rimsch's father, a house painter who takes home just dollars a day, said no one in his family would dare damage the Quran. We respect the Quran, just like the Bible, Rimsch's father told us. We couldn't imagine committing blasphemy, let alone actually doing it. Our children would never do this either. These are false accusations. Rimsch's lawyer says several aid groups have offered to give her and her family a home away from Pakistan. For now, Rimsha says she's not going anywhere. I won't leave my country because I love it. I love Pakistan and I won't ever leave my country. On the phone, Rimsha sounded like a normal Pakistani teenager, healthy, shy, and clearly a little nervous. She says she's still willing to come back and live in this neighborhood if she's sure no one's going to hurt her. In the meantime, the cleric accused of framing her is in jail. Rimsha's lawyers are hoping if he's charged, prosecutors will drop the case against Rimsha. Reza Sayas, CNN, Islamabad. Al-Qaeda's leader, Ayman al-Zawahiri, has released a video confirming the death of his deputy, Abdu Yahya Alibi. According to reports, Abdu Yahya was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Pakistan. And as fighting continues to escalate in Aleppo, a Syrian watchdog has confirmed the killing of 20 government soldiers by rebel combatants. We have details of these stories and others in this news roundup. Al-Qaeda's leader, Ayman al-Zawahiri, has released a video confirming the death of his deputy, Abu Yahya al-Libi, who is seen here. The video confirms that Libi was killed in a drone strike in Pakistan's Waziristan area on June 4th. Libi was considered al-Qaeda's propaganda mastermind. He rose to prominence in 2005 when he escaped U.S. custody in Afghanistan. As fighting rages in Aleppo between Syrian government forces and rebels, a Syrian watchdog said that rebels summarily executed at least 20 soldiers. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said the executed soldiers were captured at a military compound. They had their eyes blindfolded and hands tied before being lined up and shot sometime over the weekend. A UN inquiry has accused the army and the rebels of committing war crimes, but said that violations by the rebels are on a much lower scale. China sent two patrol ships to the Senkaku Islands, which are at the center of a row with Japan. The move came as the Japanese government announced it had completed its planned purchase of the islands. Chinese Prime Minister Wen Jiaobao said the islands were an inherent part of China's territory and vowed his country would never yield an inch on its sovereignty. But analysts downplayed the significance of the move, saying it may even allow both sides to temper tensions. The islands are also claimed by Taiwan, which strongly protested Japan's move. Police in India's Tamil Nadu state arrested dozens of activists accused of leading violent protests against the loading of uranium fuel at a nuclear power plant. Police shot dead one fisherman during the protest. Activists say they will continue to fight till the nuclear plant is shut down. The plant is one of many that India hopes to build as part of its ambitious nuclear power program. India has been caught in the backlash against atomic power caused by last year's disaster at Japan's Fukushima power plant. Well, time now to take another break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned in. Revolution of great young minds and a competition where everyone is a winner. It is a display of academic potentials, talent, and beauty. Founded and supported by His Excellency the President, Chef Professor Dr. Al Haji Yahya AJJ Jami, the finals of the 2012 Miss 22nd July Scholarship Pageant will take place on Saturday, September 15, 2012 at the Paradise Suits Hotel starting at 8 p.m. The chief guests of honors are His Excellency the President, Chef Professor Dr. Alhaji Yahya AJJ Jame, and Her Excellency the First Lady, Madam Zainab Yahya AJJ Jame. Guest artist is Sekuba Bambino, Mam Tam Sirnjai, and Jali Keba. Proudly sponsored by the Gambia Ports Authority, the Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, Gambia Petroleum, Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, the Gambia Tourism Board, GRTS, Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation, and APRISAL. Support the Miss 22nd July Scholarship Pageant as the scheme will benefit all and sundry. 
Welcome back. Andy Murray has become Britain's first male major champion.